it, this is the beautiful peak where all those Maan Leelas of Radha and Krishna took place. <laughs> now this place is called as Mor Kutir. I'll spend a couple of minutes speaking about this pastime. Mor in Hindi means a peacock. Kutir means the place. So this is basically, if you literally translate it in English, it's called as the peacock place. You know, it's the Mor Kutir. There are fascinating stories as far as this place is concerned. <laughs> Um, I don't know if I would have time, but I'll tell you at least two stories. The first story, related again to Man, is that one day Krishna was sitting with Srimati Radharani and he thought, let me glorify my pure devotee. Pure devotees spend all their time glorifying Krishna, and now Krishna is trying to reciprocate. So he told Srimati Radharani, oh Srimati Radharani, you're so beautiful. Look at you. Look at your face. It's like a full moon. And as soon as Krishna said full moon, Radharani said, stop. Don't you know there's waxing and waning and it's only on one night that you can find the full moon? Is my face like that? Does the beauty increase and decrease? Why are you comparing me to the full moon? Krishna said, but what I was trying to say, stop. Full moon has spots. Are you trying to say that my face is filled with spots? And Krishna thought, my goodness, I mean... She's always smarter than me, what to do? I, and then Radharani went on top of that hill and she started looking on the other side with her face becoming red in man. She said, I'm not going to talk to him. He always tries to insult me like this. Krishna was trying to wave, he said, no, stop. Enough of that insult. And then she went in isolation and she started crying and her face became red. And Krishna thought, now I have to somehow pacify her. I didn't do anything wrong. What to do? And then he knew that Radharani likes dancing. And among the birds, the peacock is known for its beauty and its dance. So Krishna thought, to break Radharani's man, to break her sulking mood, I'm ready to do anything. So Krishna became a peacock <laughs> on, this, on the top of this hill. <laughs> and Radharani was, was on the other side, and Krishna comes on top of the hill here, just face to face, so that Radharani can see. because. She's angry and she's looking on the other side and she finds this beautiful peacock. And it, is a, it has a different complexion. It has a bluish black complexion. Never seen a peacock like that. Does, generally the peacock has a bluish complexion. This is a bluish black complexion. And it dances wonderfully, just par excellence. So Radharani started smiling and she was literally giving the beat and the rhythm and she said, what grace, this peacock is gifted. And then she thought, wait a minute, I haven't seen peacocks like this, so there's something. Either it's a demon who's come in disguise, or it's Krishna. And there's no difference, because Krishna's a demon in my eyes. Said, it has to be Krishna. But by then she was pacified. And the rhythm and the beat kept her so entertained, she thought, now I can't just sit here and view this. I have to go and participate. And Radharani became a peahen. Krishna was the peacock and she became peahen and, <coughs> and the peacock and the peahen that is Sri Sri Radha and Krishna danced as the Sakhis came out of the Kunjas and started singing. Our Acharyas explained this is the highest ecstasy found in the spiritual world and this ecstasy of coming together and singing and chanting comes in the age of Kali Yuga as Harinam Sankirtan. Sometimes we fail to understand that link. How is it possible that coming together and chanting pleases Krishna? But in its purest state, it can go even up to the extent of pacifying Radha and Krishna in their man leelas with chanting and dancing. <laughs> so very wonderful pastimes have taken place on this hill. So this is called as Mor Kutir. And in fact, on this hill lived a very great soul who was blind. In, in, materially speaking, he was blind. He couldn't see anything. But as soon as he heard of this pastime, he left everything and came onto this hill. And he said, I have only one desire in my life. If I ever get eyes, I want to see this pastime. He said, I want to settle in this place where this pastime has taken place, is taking place, will take place, only with this desire that I want to see Radha and Krishna face to face in this pastime with my eyes. 
after performing bhajan for 60 years on top of this hill, Srimati Radharani appeared to him and said, Oh dear Sadhu, I am very happy with your chanting. Because he would chant day and night crying. I am not crying because I have no eyes. I am crying because I have no spiritual vision to see this Leela face to face. I have heard about this, but that doesn't quench my heart. I want to see it face to face. I want to see how Krishna tries his best to pacify his pure devotees. So Radharani appeared to him and said, I am very happy with you. I am ready to reveal this whole pastime in front of you. I will unfold every single detail, but there is a condition. What do you think is the condition? Shouldn't tell anybody. In fact, Radharani is most merciful. So the condition was, whatever you see, you should paint so that everyone gets to know what you've seen. Supremely merciful, Srimati Radharani. If it was Krishna, he would say, I'm, I'm going to reveal myself to you, but don't, don't, reveal, don't tell anybody what you saw, etc. But Radharani is like, I'll reveal it to you, and you reveal it to others. Because not everybody can see this pastime. He said, wait a minute, you want me to paint this pastime? I can't even see. Radharani said, don't worry. I will give you what you lack and I will preserve what you have. Yoga Kshemam Bahamya. But the sadhu said, but where will I get the paint from? Where will I get the canvas from? Well, where will I get the brushes from? Radharani said, just try and you will get it. So by the mercy of Srimati Radharani, although he was blind, he could collect a few herbs and then crush them into paint and he could get the barks of a few trees and get them together as canvas and just would search around underground and he would find brushes. So Radharani helped him and when he saw this whole pastime unfold in front of him, he just painted it so beautifully, so beautifully that even today, even today, that painting of that sadhu is there in the temple of Morkutir, and everyone who goes to that temple can see this painting as it is. Can we see our supreme fortune? We are sitting here in Boston and we are seeing the painting that is there in the temple of Morkutir, painted by a sadhu revealed to him by Shri Radha and Krishna. <laughs> this is Srimati Radharani and Sri Krishna dancing. <laughs> Beautiful, exquisite, especially to be done by somebody who is materially blind and he has seen this face to face and he just painted. So even now when you go to this temple, there is a beautiful painting and this is the painting that devotees bow down to and they see, oh this is how they look, <laughs> like that. In fact,